All right, today I'm gonna to share the 11 reasons why you should not move to the Tampa area. I'm Sam, and as always, we make these videos for you to understand the whole Tampa area. Today, 11 reasons not to move here. So these are actual reasons that people use to not move here, or they move here and these are reasons why they struggle to live here. We're gonna hop right into it. Number one is weather. I've got the list written down right here. We're gonna go through each of them. So weather, what do I mean? Well, first of all, summer is long, right? It's hot, it's humid. What do they say? It's not the heat, it's the humidity. That's kind of true here. I was actually in Vegas a few weeks ago. It was 105 degrees, it's out on a golf course, super sunny, and it feels hotter in the Tampa area when it's 92 because of how humid it is. It really does make that much of a difference. Of course, I'm gonna say you kind of get used to it. I'm kind of used to it now that I've been here four years, but it is something. Because of the humidity, you sweat quite a bit more. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. It's kind of up to you. Okay, also with weather, we have a hurricane season. We have a big chunk of the year that is designated hurricane season. What that means is there's just increased hurricane activity during that season in the Atlantic Ocean. Those are coming this way again and again. They break up, they become tropical storms, they become hurricanes. They hit the East Coast, they come around and go over Cuba and then hit the Gulf Coast. Like, There's all different kinds of things that can happen in that. It is just a season of more rain and more flooding. So that season is just kind of brutal. It just is. It's interesting too that all those line up together, the hot, humid summer, the hurricanes, the increased flooding, they all kind of lay there together really May to the end of October. And a final point about weather, this is something my wife struggles with and she actually grew up here. There's no real seasons in Florida. It does cool off, but the trees don't change. There's not like that feeling of fall really until like end of November, December, when it starts to cool off a little bit. The trees don't turn, there's no snow obviously. Like, it just doesn't feel like a big seasonal shift like you do have in a lot of places in the US. Okay, number two is high prices. Now, I hear you, prices in Tampa have increased a lot. They're still right around the, the national average. But if you were thinking about moving down here in 2020 or 2021, as some of our clients considered and then ended up moving a little bit later, prices just kept going up. Prices are significantly higher than they were in 2020. And that happened in a lot of the country, but it definitely happened here. You're definitely gonna see that impact. And maybe you think the market's gonna come down. Maybe you think inventory's gonna go up all of a sudden. If rates go down, like, I'm not gonna pretend like I know exactly what's gonna happen. I know it's still a very popular destination for people to move, for people to relocate to. So I don't think prices are just gonna drop all of a sudden. Okay, number three, along with home prices are insurance prices. The cost of insurance is super high down here. Whether that's your homeowner's insurance or your flood insurance, if you're in a flood zone and have to have flood insurance, of course, you can have flood insurance if you're not in a flood zone. Also something people ask about all the time because they see it online is that car insurance is quite a bit more expensive down here than other places. And it is higher than the national average. When we moved here, our insurance went up about 30 or 40% compared to Colorado. Now, if you're in a couple zip codes where you're really close to interstates and you always have to get on the interstate, it's gonna go up even more. It really depends exactly the zip code you're in and how far you're driving to work. The more time you have on our roads, the more likely an accident is. <laughs> I've had an accident already being in Florida for four years. So that is a factor. But let's go back to homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance has also gone up a lot. There are measures you can take, or you know, even when you're shopping for a house, certain things to look for, specifically in your wind mitigation report. So we do these additional reports in Florida, the four point inspection and the wind mitigation inspection. In your wind mitigation report, it, sh it says how your roof is attached and specifically how your trusses are attached to the walls. That is super important. If there are hurricane clips there or some kind of additional clip, there is a discount that you could ask for on your insurance. So my home, it's about an $1,100 a year discount because of those hurricane clips. So insurance is a factor, homeowner's insurance, flood insurance. And if you go after those kind of homes where you do have some additional discounts on your homeowner's insurance, that will make a difference, but it's still likely to go up year after year 
even if it's just not as much. I own two homes right now. One I have a renter in and I really do wanna sell that home. That insurance, when I first bought it in 2020, was around 4,500 for homeowners and flood. Right now, it's over $9,000 for homeowners and flood. And it did flood, so maybe they're right in charging more if the risk has increased somehow, like I get that, but that just shows the actual increase in the cost. That home has also appreciated in four years by about 80%. Okay, number four on my list is bugs. Let's go with bugs and animals. This is a big factor to people. We have tons of mosquitoes. You can probably hear the cicadas behind me. We have cockroaches, a bunch of different kinds of cockroaches and spiders and snakes and alligators and all those kind of things. Now, these kind of creepy crawlies don't really bother me, but it's really up to you if that's a big deal. It, it really is a big factor for some people. Obviously, a lot of people have pest control, like regular pest control on their homes, where somebody comes and sprays like along your wall and foundation, then there's all kinds of other things you can do to keep termites away, to keep cockroaches away, to keep the mosquitoes out of your yard. There's a lot of deterrence you can do, but it is just an, it's an, all of a sudden an additional thing you have to worry about. Our home, we have an acre and there's a big privacy fence all the way around. The people that we bought it from, he told me that they put that fence in because there's this little lake behind us and they were worried that alligators would come in their yard. He told me they lived here five years and they never saw a single alligator in the neighborhood. So some of it is blown out of proportion a little bit, but I also know that the lake on the other side of our property, across the street, they see alligators in there all the time. But even to come out here and shoot this video, I sprayed bug spray on myself and that is just something you would have to deal with if you lived here. Even right now, I have bugs crawling on my camera. Hopefully they don't crawl on the lens right in front of me. But it's a factor all around us, especially in the summer. Okay, number five is schools. Now this is actually a reason why some people don't move here. We've had a lot of clients that have you know, looked at a bunch of different areas, have analyzed the schools. The public schools are just kind of on par. They're rarely better than average based on your rankings on niche.com, on great schools, on whatever people like to look at with like test scores and things like that. Actually, homeschooling has become way more popular in Florida in the past few years. Some of that to do with the pandemic, but some of it just families wanting to have a different option. In the midst of that, another thing that's gotten popular, especially this school year, is kind of this hybrid program where some of it's at school and some of it's at home. There are a lot of options like that now, but the schools overall, the public schools are par. Now, they're not gonna often win awards, but they're not scary. They're somewhere in between there. There are specific areas with pretty high ranking public schools, but that's just not very many areas. Some families tend to gravitate toward those areas if schools, like specific things with schools is a big deal to them. That may be test scores, that may be you know, academic options, extracurricular options, sports, like there's all kinds of things. And every family has things that are important to them about schools and every family thinks of it a little bit differently. So when we get our clients on a call, what I like to ask is, hey, what makes a good school for you? Because that might be very different than how I think about it. And what I want to help families do is actually find the right spot for them. But we have had a couple clients that we're showing houses to, they're really excited. And then they just don't feel satisfied with the school options that are around there. So they decide to stay where they are for a few more years. Okay, number six on my list is old areas. Now this could be homes, this could be commercial developments, but let's just talk about kind of the older areas in the Tampa area. Because Florida is an old state, because Tampa is an old city, there is some deterioration, whether that's old cigar factories or it's old roads or it's just infrastructure kind of lagging behind. Actually, I had some friends out from Colorado and this really stood out to them of like, everything is just kind of old and blah. Now, not everywhere is it like that, but there are specific areas in even central Tampa, in South Tampa, or in you know all those areas right around the middle of the city where there are a lot of older buildings, a lot of kind of gentrification happening, a lot of redevelopment happening. Some of this is just deterioration because of how old these properties are. And you don't only see this in Tampa, you see this on the beaches sometimes too. Some of these old condo buildings just look like old block housing. Now I get it, it's kind of hard to make a condo building look very pretty, but they also just look like they're from the 60s and 70s. And so that is a factor if you're coming here, maybe you like that old charm, maybe you don't. All right, number seven on my list, Tampa's kind of non-walkable. You have to have a car to get around. 
Whether you're commuting to work or you're just going to the beach, we have one client right now looking for a house. She wants to be able to ride her bike to the beach and then walk on that beach. And she wants to be able to ride her bike to a very specific beach. So the search gets even more narrow. It's doable actually, but it's just not a very walkable city. Now you might get to an area, you can drive to an area, you can drive to downtown St. Pete, you can drive to downtown Tampa, and then walk around a lot in those areas and there's a lot to do. But living close to things where you can, that you can walk to is, is pretty rare around here. Okay, number eight, tourists and snowbirds. Now I'm lumping these together and then I'll kind of roll snowbirds into the next one, you'll see. This is a hot spot for tourists. People like to come here, we get a lot of their sales tax, they contribute to our economy, we like it but it is just a factor. You have people coming into your town, people you know, maybe renting an Airbnb in your neighborhood. It just kind of creates a different feel. You'll even notice this in the small towns that are part of the Tampa area. Whenever I lived in Tarpon Springs, there's the, the sponge docks there where they actually do go out and harvest sponges from the, the Gulf. And it's like the sponge capital of the world. On weekends during the summer, you just get a flock of visitors into the, that area. And when you're just in your own town doing your own thing, it's a little bit confusing. But as most of the things on this list, if you do wanna be here, you get used to it. Okay, snowbirds. What is a snowbird? A snowbird is somebody that owns a property somewhere else and one here. They also flock here in a specific season. Typically, they come in the winter whenever it's cold up north. Now that does create some kind of impact on your neighborhood or on the you know kind of vacant feel part of the year. I don't really love that, but they're paying property taxes here and that's kind of how it is. Okay, next thing on the list, number nine, is retirees. Snowbirds aren't always retirees. Now, for a long time, Florida has been this kind of spot where people retire to. It still is that a little bit. Some of the prices have gotten to a point where that's a little more challenging for people that are on a fixed income. You know, suddenly insurance could increase or those kind of things. And if you're currently working and you have more chance to move up at your job, like you can handle some of that a little bit more than if you're on a fixed income. But retirees and snowbirds are two different things. They might be the same in some scenarios, but some people just wanna have a vacation house down here. That's a snowbird. Somebody just moving here to retire is a different thing. People do that. Sure, there are areas where you have a lot of retirees. There are a lot of 55 plus communities that are super active, have all kinds of activities and, and events you could do at, in your community. There's all kinds of things like that. So if you want to be, if you wanna retire down here, there's a lot of cool options. But also we've had you know, people that are single and in their 40s, they come and visit and they feel like, hey, where do I see people my age? Like, I wanna get out and date and meet people and all, all the people I see are much older than me. And some of that is context, right? We might be at a restaurant on a Wednesday. Yeah, the people that are gonna be here right now are, are probably not you know, young working professionals. So keep that in mind. Number 10 on the list is the suburb takeover. So we've talked about like suburbs explained, we've talked about some of the, uh, these other things recently. And this outer ring of the area is just growing fast. A lot of locals don't love all these big suburbs being built. It brings a lot of new population into the area, but this has been happening again and again. It just keeps growing outward. These outer suburbs are just getting nicer because they're newer. All the development around it is brand new. So of course it feels nice and shiny and new and eventually we'll have to do another ring outside of that, I think. But you do get out into these areas that used to feel very rural and kind of old Florida. They're starting to feel a lot more developed and suburban. That is a pretty sad fact to some locals, I know for sure, especially my father-in-law. You know, he reminisces about when there used to be, you know, a couple million people in Florida and now there's, you know, 23 million. Very different kind of place than he lived 50 years ago. All right, number 11 on my list is the Florida man. Now, I don't really care about all the catchy news articles, but this kind of, I don't care about anything vibe of the Florida man does kind of exist down here. Some of that I, I enjoy. It's kind of like, don't bother me if I don't bother you, like whatever. Some of that is very kind of libertarian almost, but the Florida man articles wouldn't be so rampant if it wasn't kind of true. Now, a lot of it is blown out of proportion, but it is a little wild in some areas down here. I actually love how crazy it is, how kind of confusing and different each little section is. If you like that, you'll love it here. So 
And as always, we make these videos for you to get value and to learn about the area. We're also realtors and we'd love a chance to earn your real estate business. If you're looking to buy or sell in the Tampa area, we'd love to be your real estate choice. Give us a call, text, or email anytime. Thanks for coming by.